In just a few short months, we have seen rates go from sub 3% to over 5%. So what is the effect of higher interest rates on housing? I'm Rebecca, the Mortgage Mentor, and I'm here to make mortgages make sense and help you buy a home the smart way. With the quick run-up in rates that we saw this spring, we are finally starting to see the effect on housing. The biggest and the quickest impact that we're seeing is that supply is slowly starting to increase on the market. What's important to understand is that for the last 10 years, supply of homes has been steadily decreasing. Having six months of supply, meaning if every home on the market sold, it would take six months for that to happen based off of current dynamics, that's considered a balanced market. On the national level, we have had less than six months supply for 10 years. We've especially seen that contract within the last three years. This was something that was already happening in late 2018 and leading into 2019. Then when the pandemic hit and we saw people with a renewed interest in their homes because they're working from home or because they have remote work and they could live anywhere, we also saw an increased interest in investment properties such as a true investment property and also a big boom in having Airbnbs. All of this plus the fact of having institutional investors companies who go and purchase homes in bulk with the purpose to rent them, that increased pressure on limited inventory that was not enough to match home buyer demand has seen a run up in home prices. Now with the increase in rates, that has tampered some of that home buyer demand. What we have seen is that some home buyers have been priced out of the market. The payments either got too expensive for their personal taste, or maybe they didn't qualify. However, what we're seeing is some backfill of that demand with buyers that aren't as price sensitive that they can absorb some of those higher interest rate payments, but they want to be in the market because of perceived lower competition for homes. At long last though, we are starting to see an increase in supply. And this is the first time that it's happened within the last three years. Now, what does that increased supply look like? Are we heading for a crash? All of these questions are questions that my clients constantly are asking me about to understand where we are in the market and what's the best decision for them so they can make a smart choice. The thing to keep in mind is as we see inventory increase and level with demand, that should help to stabilize home prices. What we may see is less competition for homes, meaning you're not going to have those open houses where you have 20 people lined up out the door, or you might see less multiple offer situations where instead of having 20 people make an offer on your home, maybe there are a handful to a dozen. What I think that we'll see is a continued push-pull of the demand and supply, meaning we'll see the supply increase a little bit. We'll see some of the mania come out of the market, meaning buying homes unseen, paying extreme prices over the listing price, things like that. We might see some of that mania calm down, but what I think that we'll see is we'll still see home buyers entering the market because they feel like this is the right opportunity and the right time for them to have a chance in the market. The signs that you'll want to look for for the market stabilizing and getting closer to that six months or a balanced market are going to be less multiple offer situations, meaning many people making an offer on the same house. I think you'll also see increased days on market, meaning a home isn't going to necessarily go under contract within hours. Maybe it takes a couple days, maybe it takes a couple weeks. I think we'll also see some aged properties lasting on the market. What that means is that if a home isn't necessarily as favorable because of the condition that it's in for the price, you're going to see buyers not choose that home because it's not as favorable and they may have more options to choose from. What this should lead into is that we'll see a lower percentage of price increases or home values increasing. Some areas will also see home values flatten and some may even decline. Keep in mind that this is a normalization or a correction of the market, but does not necessarily indicate a crash. To have a crash, we have to have an overabundance of supply and much lower demand than what we're currently seeing. My advice to you when you're looking at the market is have a good realtor who can advise you on what your actual market dynamics are and how that fits into what it is that you want to buy. And make sure that you know your loan options. Work with a strong lender that can walk you through different strategies depending on your price point or what the current dynamics are in the market. I'm Rebecca, the Mortgage Mentor. I'm licensed in 30 states plus DC. I would love to help, so please comment below with any questions you have or feel free to reach out. Thank you.